from Division 2, go ahead and cut that hole. We're cutting the hole. All right, on today's fire minute, we're gonna. Oh, so pretty! Fire's freaking awesome. Let's go. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Skipping ahead, Scott Mackey's gonna go over with us a hole that he recently cut and uh, obstacle that he had to overcome. And maybe obstacle isn't the right word. I'll let Scott explain, but I will say you never know what you're going to find on these roofs. Without further ado, you have the roof, Scotty. So Tommy, my partner on the hook, finds me a structural member. I cheat to the left of it, expecting to hit a rafter pretty quickly on my push cut. When I don't, I continue my head cut and roll the rafter I had planned on using for my center rafter loop. On both my top and bottom cut, I felt that rafter and the next one for my stopping point pretty easily. But what had confused me on that very first cut is that I thought I was cutting pretty far without finding another rafter. The reason being is because on my top cut and bottom cut, I had completely cut through that rafter I was looking for. Our heels are backed up towards the edge of that roof line, so we ended up with a 2x8 foot hole instead of the usual 4x4 foot hole. A little more narrow than usual, but still effective. Okay, so what's the talking point here? Believe it or not, it's not the importance of making sure you roll your structural members. It's that, on occasion, your structural members may be compromised for reasons beyond heat and fire. We went back and checked out the hole in daylight, and what we discovered was that while the expectation is to roll a rafter, we can't expect someone to be able to read braille with the guide bar. Obviously, the termites had a field day with this long before Scott got to it. And if you're cutting a good distance without hitting a structural member, that might speak to the integrity below you. Given it's easy to make assumptions, I appreciate you stepping up and sharing, Scotty. Nice work.